Good afternoon, good evening, everyone who's joining us for our virtual uh, community input session. We need just a few minutes to get everything set up for our Spanish translation. So we'll be starting in a couple minutes when Sasha lets me know that we're ready to go. Thank you. Can my interpreters that are here identify themselves in the chat? It's asking for my interpreters that are here to identify themselves in the chat. Thanks everyone for joining us. Just give us a few minutes while we get uh, the interpreters set up. Thank you. Does anyone who's here currently need translation services? Can you identify yourselves in the chat if you need translation?
We'll give it just another uh, minute before we get started. Thank you. Hay alguien que necesita traducción en español? Por favor, poner tu nombre en el chat. Vamos a empezar la junta en un minuto. Let's go ahead and get started. Sasha, I do see Pablo has joined us. Is Pablo one of our translators? Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Kelly Kuykendall with the City of Santa Rosa. Thank you so much for joining us um, for our Homelessness Solutions Strategic Plan Community Input Session. I'm the city's homeless services manager. I'm gonna start with a couple housekeeping items and then we're gonna uh, turn it over to introductions of city of Santa Rosa staff and uh, focus strategies staff. Um, I wanted to remind everybody about the city of Santa Rosa's commitment to civility. Uh, I'll cover it briefly and then we are gonna post it in the chat. It's part of today's agenda in both English and Spanish. To assure civility in its public meetings, the Santa Rosa City Council has adopted rules of decorum applicable to the council, staff, and the public to be followed at council meetings and implemented by staff at other public meetings hosted by the city. In an effort to promote respect for the freedom of speech and the right to request that elected officials address citizens' issues that relate to city business, the city council and city staff seeks to now there's six points, I'm just gonna to touch on two briefly. The remainder of them will be included um, in the chat. Uh, the first one is help create an atmosphere of respect and civility where elected officials, city staff and the public are free to express their ideas. And the second is establish and maintain a cordial and respectful atmosphere during discussions. Thank you. I already introduced myself. I'm gonna turn it over to Megan Bassinger. Good evening. I'm Megan Bassinger. I'm the Director of Housing and Community Services for the City of Santa Rosa. Sasha, you want to go next? Hi, I'm Sasha Cohen. I'm the Program Specialist for Homeless Services Division with the City of Santa Rosa. Tara? Good evening. I'm Tara Ruth. I'm a Senior Consultant with Focus Strategies. Tracy? Hi, my name is Tracy Bennett. I'm Director of Analytics and Evaluation with Focus Strategies. And Hannah. Hello, I'm Hannah Gossett. I'm a consultant with Focus Strategies. And before we jump in, um, I, I did, we're gonna put up a poll. Sasha's gonna help us with that. Um, it's gonna ask people, uh, 
where you, whether you live or work in Santa Rosa. So if you can please take that poll before we get started, appreciate it. Thank you. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Okay, hoping you all had a chance to take the poll. We're going to move on. And Megan, if you could advance this to the first slide, please. Thank you. So here's a slide covering the agenda. We've already done welcome and introductions. I'll provide an, a brief overview of the strategic planning process. Uh, the city is in the process of developing a five-year strategic plan, and we've engaged focused strategies to help us in that process. And part of that um, involves stakeholder engagement. And this community input session is one of several engagements that are underway to, to gather input from stakeholders and the public. A uh, couple housekeeping keeping items to touch on real quick. Um, the participant input and discussion section will comprise three questions with 20 minutes for each question. You can provide input in the chat or raise your hand. We request that you keep your input on topic with the questions and brief to allow everyone a chance to participate. We will do our best to give everyone a chance to provide input. You can also provide input via the Let's Connect sur survey until June 1st. And if you have input outside of the scope of the questions or the strategic planning process, please direct those to homeless at srcity.org. And uh, Sasha will post a link to the survey and our email in the chat. I will be um, timing uh, uh, members of the public as they're providing input. Um, and if you start to go over that two minutes, I'm just gonna give you a reminder um, to, to wrap up your, your thoughts and your comments, just so that we can provide everybody an opportunity to participate. With that, um, Megan, you can advance to the next slide and I'll turn it over to focus strategies to cover the presentation before we jump into the community input session. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Um, good evening, everyone. I want to give an overview of the purpose of the strategic plan. So as Kelly mentioned, um, Focus Strategies is assisting the city with developing a five-year homelessness solution strategic plan and an action plan to address homelessness in the city of Santa Rosa. Part of that process will be identifying existing resources and gaps within the city developing clear and concise goals that are measurable and actionable, and implementing strategies to reduce homelessness in the city of Santa Rosa. Next slide. I want to take you through the timeline of our process. So we've completed some information gathering and review that happened this spring. We are now in the, the last part of the stakeholder engagement process, which is occurring from April to June of this year. We will then develop a report that gives an overview of the current homelessness response and best practices, which will happen in the summer months. And then we will draft a plan and incorporate feedback from July through September and finalize the plan with the city council in September of this year. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned, our current phase is the key stakeholder interviews, including 
or the current phase is, is gathering information and community input that includes key stakeholder interviews with service providers, um, city officials, advocates, and other key uh, people involved in the homelessness response system. We're also holding focus groups with service providers, housing developers, and people experiencing homelessness, both sheltered and unsheltered homelessness. And then you are participating this evening in the community input session. Next slide. So part of the community input is we want to know how community members such as yourself define success. So when we are asking the next questions, we'd like you to think about both how you define success and what key goals and strategies should be incorporated in the plan. So we can move into our, our question and input phase. Um, if the city staff are ready for that. Yeah, before we jump into the first question, yeah. Sasha, I think you had um, some information to share with the public about how to uh, raise your hand or provide input. Yes, thank you. If you have a comment, you can raise your hand, please. If you're calling in to listen to the meeting audibly, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will move one by one down the list of attendees with their hands raised. Once you've commented, the Zoom host will lower your hand. Those listening on the Spanish channel but wishing to comment, please turn off or leave the interpretation entirely at that time you hear your name called so you can join the main channel to make your comment heard and translated into English. The icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening to Spanish. So our first question is uh, about what does the success of the five-year homelessness strategic plan look like to you? If the plan were implemented, what would the landscape of homelessness look like in five years? Adrian? Covert. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I think I think this is a great question. I'm going to throw out a couple ideas. Um, what would success look like in five years? I think the rate of homelessness, that is the number of homeless residents per 10,000 residents overall, would be halved. Um, or some goal, but the goal should be, you know, the relative prevalence of homelessness. Currently in Sonoma County, it's about uh, 56. Um, in the 2020 PID count, it was 56 homeless residents per 10,000 residents overall. I know that's the county figure. If we can drill that down to the city figure, um, I think that is as good a metric as any. Um, that metric is available to, uh, for, for continuums of care throughout the country. So it's a, a good way to track progress. Um, so that's the rate of homelessness. Uh, I also think that the, another key factor should be the rate of unsheltered homelessness. That is the, the rate of people who do become sh homeless in the city, the uh, ability of them to access shelter, which is a basic human need. Uh, we should be trying to get at least to the national average outside of California. Uh, the unsheltered rate in California is about 75% of homeless residents lack access to shelter. Uh, it's about that in Sonoma County. I'm unsure what it is in the city of Santa Rosa, but it's probably similar um, around 70, 75%. Uh, outside of California and the rest of the United States, the numbers are reversed. Only about 25% of homeless Americans outside of California lack access to shelter. So I think the two key metrics for me, uh, I'm a resident of the West End District. I volunteered for the pit count uh, to do the pit count in February for my name, my neighborhood um, would be 
trying to bring down the rate of homelessness uh, overall and reducing the rate of unsheltered homelessness. Thank you. All right, next will be Arlie Haig. Yes, hi, I'm, I have been involved with uh, housing the homeless and servicing the needs of the homeless for a while. And to me, people do not um, understand what it's like for the homeless to be on the street and without. I think that uh, public relations needs to be improved about the conditions that the homeless live, uh, stay in. And I also think that in five years, we really should have safe havens developed for the homeless that aren't just mass um, tents that they have uh, like 20 or 50 beds inside that, uh, you know, it could be tiny homes, it could be RVs, it could be um, just living in their cars, but it needs to, we need to have locations where they can get their stuff together because that is one of the main problems is that they are so scattered having to move around all the time and other reasons these these um shelters these shelters that they do have need to be reclassified and in the i uh, in the classification of shelter it could include safe parking and individual units because, uh, well, just because that makes sense. Anyway, uh, I have other ideas, but that's some of them. Thanks. You guys are doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you. And Janine Peterson. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes. Hi. Um, well, mainly um, the first thing is that um, I've, I've written into the city many times and um, because we've had a problem in my neighborhood in Bellevue Ranch with the homeless being on Silver Spur for over two years. And for the first year, I didn't say anything because of COVID and, um, and you know, all of those people, they're on drugs. And I mean, I'm sure that you guys have been by there before and um, seen the situation. And it's just hard for me because I live right on Goldpan and it's right around the corner. And it's like really distressing for the neighbors and um, to see that. And another RV has just moved in, a huge RV, um, and they're all they're all drug addicts. And you know, and I've been threatened many times, and I just. I feel like um, that's first and foremost, I would like them moved off of the street, you know, because it's, you know, it's by Meadowview school and, you know, there's kids around and it's just, and I've heard teenagers say, mom, you know, don't, I don't want to walk this way. I don't want to walk past these people. And, you know, they're all on drugs and the guys laying out there constantly, um, you know, just, <laughs> just for everybody to see looking crazy without, you know, shirtless, you know what I mean? And I just think that this shouldn't be going on in our neighborhood. And um, so that's the first thing. And um, I just, I mean, I really don't know what can be done because most of these people are on drugs and alcohol. And I've talked to numerous people that are in that situation and they want to continue living that way because they want to continue their lifestyle. You know what I, you know? So that's basically all I have to say regarding that. Thank you, Janine. Next Thank will you. be Jackie Gunny. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Okay, so I have a couple of concerns. Just recently, there was an article um, in the Press Democrat regarding the Palms Hotel and the millions of dollars that were spent making that a homeless <clears throat> housing situation. And now the you know, it's practically un uninhabitable with uh, vermin and mold and uh, insects. 
So if we're going to spend a lot of, and I don't know, because I didn't hear your plan. I was waiting for a five-year plan and I didn't hear much, but I don't know what the plan is, but I'm assuming it's going to include government money for housing. And if that's the case, we need to make sure that there's some accountability and some follow through for where those dollars are going to go. It's not just uh, here, here's, here's millions of dollars here and then walk away. And there's no oversight for that. And the other thing is I agree with the previous woman that I don't think that there should be camps allowed in residential areas, period. Like Sebastopol passed a ban on camping in residential areas. And I think that Santa, Santa Rosa should too, because, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about homeless as much as anyone else, but I'm also concerned about the quality of our neighborhoods and the quality of maintaining, you know, um, our quality of life and what used to be a really beautiful town to live in. That's my comments. Thank you, Jackie. Next, we'll have Debbie McKay. Hi, thanks for this opportunity. Um, so there's several things I would like to see. I'd like to see more safe parking. It took the city a really long time to finally be willing to do that. And I actually live quite close to where the safe parking is. And I just wanna say it works. There's been no problems that I can see. And so I'd like to see that expanded. That's um, not necessarily the total solution, but it keeps people in a safer environment. Um, I'd like to see, I mean, ideally, I'd like to see no unsanctioned camp. If we can come up with enough alternatives, then there won't need to be unsanctioned camps. Um, so I'd like to see more tiny houses or similar housing to the housing that's out at Los Gilicos. Um, I'd like to see um, less dependence on homeless shelters because I think those are attractive to very few people. Most people would rather be out on the street than be in those large homeless shelters because they have no privacy, they don't feel safe. And with COVID and things like that, it makes it even more of an issue of feeling safe. I'd like to see really robust mental health services. I'm really thrilled that the city has started the in-response program and has a plan to grow that. And I think that having robust mental health services is a part of curing homelessness. And I'm not, I'm not saying that everyone that's homeless is mentally ill, but I think that people become mentally ill or have mental health issues when they become homeless because it's extremely difficult to live out on the streets and not know where you're going to sleep or where you're going to get food every night so i think that, that is adding to our mental health problems and so robust mental health services have to be a part of the solution and i'd also like to see more long-term drug rehab programs in sonoma county we are really lacking in that and in, for people who want to get out of their addiction it's a long-term process and they need a lot of support to do that. And the 30-day programs that the county offers and things like that help some people, but for a lot of people, that's not enough. So I'm hoping you'll look at a more global picture besides just sheltering people, providing the wraparound services that can help them make changes in their life to where they will not just fall back into homelessness when they receive help, then they can have a plan that's long-term that helps them transition their life to a different place. I don't think anybody really wants to be homeless. And I think we need to give them the services they need to be able to live a decent life in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And next we'll have Victoria Yanez. Thank you very much for this opportunity to ask a question. Um, I'm concerned with the city's policy to cite unsheltered persons swept out of private property to cite them with a misdemeanor trespassing citation. Um, excuse me. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, um, because a sign just came up to said that your speaker will to unmute again. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, yes, um, we have a lot of citations that came out of Shamrock Sweep, and there's an imminent sweep about to take place with with about a hundred people, and 
this policy of criminalizing the homeless is absolutely absurd, in my opinion. And I was wondering what you were going to recommend to the city's strategic plan regarding citing people with misdemeanors. Now, um, um, the other part of the question is regarding the general assistance program of the county, Welfare and Institutions Code 17,000 places the duty on the county to be the last safety net so that these kinds of situations don't happen, you know? So what I wanna know is, is the county going to work with, I mean, the city, is the city gonna work with the county to, to help them meet their duty or at least pressure them to meet their duty, which would really alleviate a lot of the problem or could have prevented it if they would have given housing services to begin with in the general assistance program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria, for your comments. Next will be Gail. Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you, Gail. Okay, well, I don't, I'm mostly listening, but I just want to say that because of a situation with uh, my late brother's house getting foreclosed, I was on the verge of becoming homeless. And if it were not for the Homeless Coalition uh, and Michael Gauss and Joseph Hegedus, I very well might have been staying in my car because I really didn't know where to go. But Thankfully, I was able to get into the program at the Holiday Inn in Windsor, and I stayed there for four months with my little uh, emotional support dog, and I just am very grateful for that, and uh, as a result, they were helping people there to move on to the next stage, and now I'm very, 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 very grateful that I was able to get into a apartment complex. Uh, on, it's called the... the uh, uh, it's called the Sage Commons, and it's for people that have been homeless or have had some issues with uh, mental health. So uh, that's a good thing. And uh, as far as a question goes, uh, I know I just, I'm listening to what everyone says, and especially the gentleman just before me, and I just think, or the lady, everybody is uh, saying some good things, and I'm really happy that People are trying to alleviate this. One of my concerns is that it is my belief that, well, what that lady said about everybody on drugs, not necessarily everybody was on drugs. Maybe a lot of them were. But uh, my one of my concerns is what, what do we do with people that choose to be homeless, that they don't want to be housed? So that's one of my concerns. But thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Gail, for your comments. Next will be Gail Simons. Hello, can you hear me? I can, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, I hope it doesn't take us five years to get to the plan that I would like um, to see happen. I feel that we need to have 100% of people off the streets. Um, I do think that the majority of people would like to have some safety. I think that we could do it so quickly by starting a program, a temporary program, but one that will last as long as it needs to of tiny homes, safe parking for RVs and safe parking for cars and safe tent villages um, that we're offering safety, sanitation and services like health, mental health, substance abuse services, job services, housing services and moreover these tiny villages would be offering a sense of community i'm an, a former nurse and a wannabe public health nurse i got my training in that area um, at ucsf and i know that a sense of community brings health to 
all of us, we are social animals. Um, I would like very much that, to stop seeing the senseless moving of people from place to place without enough um, uh, available slots here in the county. I can count. We don't have enough available spots for all the people that don't have housing. So I think we need to do temporary measures, as I've just mentioned. And then finally, I would like to see complete transparency in the reporting of data to the public frequently of all the various agencies um, that are involved. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Next will be Colin Tama. Good evening, this is, I'm Colin Tama, and I look at um, this space as a in legal center uh, we're based in San Rosa. So, um, Kind of just uh, what we were just seeing the plan is having shelters be more accessible for people who have wheelchairs or other mobility devices. Um, in addition to having tiny homes that are also wheelchair accessible um, for those who have, or for those who might have another mobility device. Um, and that is all for this question. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Next will be Scott Stevenson. Oh, is my mic working? We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so for the five-year plan, kind of metric for measuring success, uh, just a few things. So being able to walk around town and go on bike rides and feel safe, uh, play at parks with my family and not having to worry about my son or any of his friends coming across needles and feel safe in the evenings in our own neighborhood. We actually, we live close to downtown and there's a lot of homeless people passing through our neighborhood every, every night and, you know, cars get broken into, homes have been broken into and it's a big, it's a big issue. Um, you know, so the, I think identifying what kind of bucket the the homeless person falls into, if it was just financial um, and they, you know, just need to get back on their feet or if they're dealing with addiction or mental health, kind of one of those three buckets is going to be very important because that's going to determine how we can best help them. And I really liked what Gail said previously about just addressing this immediately with with tiny homes, safe parking and tenting villages, I think, you know, that could be very, very helpful and a quick um, kind of a quick fix on this to at least get it going the right direction. And then one other thing to add was just allowing loitering. We went on a bike ride downtown yesterday and we came across at least 20 homeless people on a bike ride downtown. And there were times where it, we felt unsafe going through groups of them you know with my with my seven-year-old son you know they're just loitering they were they were right downtown buddy when they were just loitering and you know drinking and doing who knows what else you know near the transit mall and all that in downtown santa rosa um yeah so i think not allowing them to loiter you know so that i don't know if that falls under the the srpd you know to address that but we're we're allowing them to loiter. We're allowing them to build up in certain areas where they're camping, and then days or weeks go by. Once there's enough, then we move them, and it's like it's like a shell game. We just keep moving them around, you know. And it's like I don't know. It's not effective. So yeah, I've just the, the safety is a big thing. So I think that's a very easy way to measure that. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Our final um, participant who's going to speak on this question will be Lisa Landris, and then we're going to move on to the next question. Lisa? We can't hear you, Lisa. Okay, sorry, Lisa, that we couldn't hear you. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next question. 
Kara? Yes, so our next question is, what services or resources do you think people experiencing homelessness in the city of Santa Rosa need to reduce community-wide impacts? Um, so go ahead. Denise Hill, you're first. Hi, everybody. Thanks for this meeting. Um, I strongly, strongly believe, uh, having lived next to several major encampments in the city in the last couple of years, that it's beyond just the Housing First initiative. It has to, we have to include uh, mental health and addiction facility treatments centers and add to those beds. We're so poorly under uh, capacity for those uh, the beds that we need. And I know that that rolls into the county, but I'm se seriously hoping that the city council and whoever else on staff is advocating to the county that we need these beds, uh, long term and short term, in order to address the situation of people who refuse treatment because they're mentally don't have the capacity to know what they're agreeing to or they're drug addicted and less inclined to, re um, to reach out for services. Uh, I would love to see that we focus on this and include it, acknowledge it and include it as a, a needed uh, resource. Thank you, Denise. Next, I'll have Melissa Kaplan, please. Hi, and thank you for this meeting. Um, as I've been listening to the last questions and the comments on this one, um, one thing that I think a lot of people miss is chicken and egg. Um, someone who becomes homeless for long enough develop, does develop mental health issues, and that can lead to um, uh, self-medicating, which can in turn lead to addiction, and it can get a vicious cycle going that way. We have a lot of people who are insecurely homed. They may be couch surfing. They may be, you know, car camping in a relative's driveway for a short length of time before they're kicked out. So uh, first and foremost, we need affordable, truly affordable housing for people who are low income and have oftentimes no employment opportunities at the moment. So there needs to be housing first before we can sweep people off the streets. Um, and there needs to be a variety of housing types to handle individuals, individuals with their, uh, with their pet and families. Um, and then we also need sufficient mental health and health services. Um, and we need to make ways for people who do not have vehicles to be able to access those services, whether it's bus passes or jitneys or whatever. If you can't access the services because you have no way to get there, it doesn't matter how flush we are with services. So all of this needs to be in place, I think, along with safe housing uh, and safe, uh, safe parking, all of the different opportunities for people to have a place to go that is safe. Um, before we start doing any more sweeps of encampments. And I know it sucks to have it in your neighborhood and down the street from you, um, but until we have solutions in place, I don't think sweeping people out of areas and bouncing them from one area to another is a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Next, I'm going to have Janine Peterson. Okay, thank you. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say um, regarding my last response, um, um, I wasn't referring to everybody that becomes homeless is drug addicted or alcohol dependent or mentally ill even, but the people in the Bellevue Ranch area on Silver Spur, they are, and they all do have a vehicle and they all have a huge RV. So they have... Um, shelter and they are not willing to move out of the neighborhood because it is conveniently located to Southwest Park where they could dump their garbage and use the water. And I just think as a homeowner and a you know I pay property taxes and other taxes that you know they've been there like I said for over two years and it's just you know, and the guy yells at me and says, you know, this isn't your street. And technically it's all of our streets because we pay the property taxes and other taxes to be able to have these streets. And, um, you know, so 
I feel that something like in this situation, it should be implemented that, you know, if they don't want to get clean and sober, if they don't want to live a normal lifestyle, because most of the people that are on drugs and alcohol, and I know people personally, and I used to be a drug and alcohol counselor myself, and I have talked to people and volunteered with Catholic charities at the Palms. And so I know what I'm talking about. Um, these people like their lifestyle because they can come and go as they please and they don't have to be accountable. And so um, in this situation, like in my neighborhood, I feel that if they, they don't wanna participate in being clean and sober, they need to have an area where they're told, okay, well, you have to move out of this residential neighborhood and put your car in the parking lot designated for people with RVs because it's so unfair to us to have to see that. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. The first thing my friends see is why is this happening? It's been going on for two years. It's become a running joke in our neighborhood. And it's really sad. You know, I feel like if I was to put my prop, my house up for sale today, I don't know who would want to live in the neighborhood. And my house is, you know, we keep our houses beautiful. Janine, thank you for your comments. Sorry, you just went over a few minutes and I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to provide input. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have Debbie McKay. Okay, so the things I would suggest is to do more economic and budget training and counseling with people because a lot of people don't know how to manage their money. And that would include things like assisting people with applying for disability, um, because I think there are sources of income that people could have access to if they had some assistance with that. I think it's also worthwhile looking at having some kind of a buddy system that could be two homeless people or it could be somebody in the community with a homeless person, but it's somebody they would check in with on a regular basis. So it helps be somebody to help them navigate all these crazy systems that they have to deal with. And I know there's some of that going on with in response, but not everybody's gonna be served by in response. So some kind of a buddy system to help people navigate. And I agree with the comments that are made by other people about having more mental health and drug treatment programs available to people. And I think another thing that would help is if there was some kind of system to patrol our creeks, because a lot of homeless people are living along the creeks and that makes the creeks um, feel not safe for the rest of us. And you might take a look at what Boise, Idaho has done. They have a really robust program of patrolling the creeks with volunteers and it works really, really well. So there's models out there that you could look to probably for all of these things that are being suggested and then of course we need much much more affordable housing i think it's a mistake for the city of santa rosa to accept in lieu fees from developers because that affordable housing rarely gets built because there's not enough money from those fees and it also tends to get built in the low-income neighborhoods so i think they need to really look at that policy and maybe go back to requiring developers to include the affordable housing in their market rate development. It's also better for children to be raised in that kind of environment. And again, there are studies on that that would validate that. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Next, we'll have Lisa Landris. Lisa, can't hear you. I see you're unmuted, but there's no sound. I apologize. I'm going to go ahead and move on to Lori Burmeyer. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, I would like to see a complete centralized center within the city to that is um, perfectly clear to citizens and homeless and unsheltered people. Um, I feel like the citizens of Santa Rosa and listening to some of the comments that they're very, they're not clear as to what they can do to remove the encampments in their neighborhood if they can at all. Um, and I don't think it's clear. I don't think the city or the county sends a message 
to the residents or the homeless, these are the options, this is what you can do, and this is how we get from point A to point B. Obviously, uh, having housing, safe parking, tents, uh, tiny homes, that's all part of it, but then what? And th that's where we have the issues. We don't have the mental health, we don't have the uh, drug rehabs, we don't know how to get people from point A to point B um, in a smooth manner. And furthermore, what we really don't have is any accountability for the dollars that are spent. We spend millions upon millions of dollars and we don't know how they're spent, if they're spent wisely, did this cost too much? And I think an oversight committee uh, made up of um, maybe a council members, um, employees from the city or the county and um, citizens to for a measurable um, amount of like where these dollars are going. That's my opinion and my thought. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Next will be Albert Bruin. The, uh, the subject that uh, has not been yet addressed is uh, the failure of local governance uh, to provide for the last 40 years that I know of, uh, because I have been a resident of Sonoma County for longer than that. And uh, I lived in Santa Rosa for 20 years. Uh, the failure of local governance to ensure that the uh, housing affordable, affordable housing be built uh, according to um, what uh, HUD predictions have been. And uh, local governance has been completely derelict in its responsibility in this regard. Uh, everything has been market housing and uh, uh, what would the future of homelessness look like? Uh, something very different, I hope. But uh, the NIMBYs and uh, other folks uh, who are not interested in building affordable housing with the economy in the state that it's in, we're looking at approximately 40 to 50 percent of the population that cannot afford housing in Sonoma County. Whose fault is that? And the homelessness situation is only going to get worse because uh, local governance is only catering to the uh, so-called uh, gentrification uh, and they are not the least bit concerned about uh, working people and uh, those uh, who are disabled or in need and cannot afford the housing uh, prices that are, uh, <laughs> there's more people than houses. That's all a person needs to know. So somebody has to be homeless. What is gonna be done about this? Let's stop all the hand wringing and build, build, build affordable housing. The answer to most of this, yes, we could use better programs. Yes, we could use competent case managers by the providers, people that are certified and have knowledge. Uh, they have skill sets in their field. But uh, the main problem is you can't put people in housing that does not exist. Thank you, Albert. Next will be Colin Tama. In addition to having um, a bus, mental health and drug services, They have um, linkages and access to disability organizations. Um, and then the city should also do a better job with rehousing, making sure that they have good access to home key and room key sites, as well as housing vouchers um, and 
that staff are knowledgeable of how cognitive disabilities can make that process harder, and as well as um, paying dis on disability claims. That would be a help. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Next, we'll have Jackie Gani. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, I think what, if the question is what's needed, I would think that there should be some wraparound services in addition to um, housing for the homeless, mental health, alcohol addiction services. You can't just put them in homes and walk away. Like I said, that doesn't work and it hasn't worked and it's proven to be a big disaster and a big waste of money. Also, when we're talking about um, the homeless really do need to address the needs of the entire community who has to deal with um, homeless, especially the people who have to deal with homeless in their neighborhoods. It's like um, Janine said, it's it's really not fair for citizens to be having to deal with encampments, with drugs and everything right next to their homes. It drives down the property values. It, and I'm just saying that I think that there needs to be some consideration for people in this community. And I'm gonna say it again, I think there needs to be a ban on residential camping in all neighborhoods in Sonoma County. Sebastopol passed that ban, Berkeley passed that ban, and I don't see why Santa Rosa can't pass that ban. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And we'll have Gail Simons. Yes, thank you. Oh, geez. I, uh, about for affordable housing, I wanna say that on April 26th, I'm sorry about the phone, it'll stop. On April 26th, I attended a city council meeting at which the city council okayed a planned affordable housing project of 136 beds and when they were asked about what affordable meant, it turned out that for people that could just pay 30% of their income for housing, and I'll bet most of us on this meeting um, don't pay um, 50 or 60% of our income on housing, for housing. Anyway, out of that 136 beds, for people that could only pay 30%, only 14 um, housing units were going to be built. The rest were going to be 50 to 60 percent of people's income. So we need to attend meetings. We need to be careful that when we say affordable housing, we know what that really means. Now I'd like to go back to the question um, that is at hand um, really basically. I think that, oh I wish that phone worked. Right? I think that sanitation um, is really important, uh, trash services and water. At, at sanctioned safe encampments. It's shocking to me that Santa Rosa only has one toilet open 24 hours a day to the public, one. Um, I would also uh, propose that if we had many safe parking lots or safe camping lots, not near neighborhoods, uh, we don't have to have them there we could have some that were free services to whoever needed them. Then we could have another one that charged $25 a month to the people that would like to live there. And, and for that amount, daily showers and Wi-Fi would be supplied. And then there would be another safe encampment that would charge $50 a month. And for that, we would have an outdoor kitchen that they could use. So I, I think that would uh, allow participation of the people that um, were having to live in sanctioned encampments. Uh, there could even be uh, sober living sanctioned encampments or safe parking areas. And for people that didn't want to have that restriction, there could be a separate um, sanctioned parking lot or encampment. So those are some of my ideas. We need sanitation. We need trash. Very sad that the city has taken porta potties away from some encampments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gail. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next question. Yes, so our next question is, what strategies would you like to see the city include in the strategic plan to address homelessness? For example, and some of you have already commented on some of these options, but increase interim housing options, 
slash emergency shelter, permanent supportive housing, medical and behavioral health partnerships, et cetera. So we'd like to hear from you on the strategies you would like the city to include. All right, first will be Victoria Yanis. Thank you for this opportunity. I, like I said earlier, I wanted to know where citing people for misdemeanors fit in the strategic plan. Because continuing with this policy and practice would mean that they were lessening the person's chances to be able to find rental housing if they're building a criminal record on unsheltered persons, the criminalization of homelessness. Now, um, so I would like to see a plan that would exclude the criminalization of homeless. Also, um, there should be a plan to have a, uh, I raised my hand up in the last section and it wasn't answered. So I'm, it, I'm integrating it here that part of the plan should be besides the places for people to go, which we need plenty of those, plenty of permanent housing and all that people have addressed that. But we need Santa Rosa's own navigation center so that we can keep good data and we can provide services like showers and bathrooms and clothing and food. We can provide that um, along with the navigation pointing people to the services, the mental health services and um, the services to help regarding substance problems. But um, we definitely, I want to see how, how these misdemeanors are fitting into any sort of plan. I don't think that anybody thought of that. They haven't thought, thought it out. Just like when they were giving uh, infractions, when they would do a sweep. I thought they gave that up. But this is involving private property. I understand that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria. Um, before I call on the next person, I do just want to advise that if you haven't spoken yet and you want to go ahead and raise your hand, I will be prioritizing calling on you so that you would be able to have a chance to speak. Next, I'm going to have Vaughn Sawatsky. Uh, yeah, so I'm in the don't feed the bears camp. So when everybody talks about affordable housing and such, it really comes down to, you know, what is the city code and how much does a house cost? I don't believe the homeless should be given any special rights to break any rules that the rest of us have to live by. It's insane that I have to short sort my garbage and put my orange peels in the right place or I'll be in trouble while I watch the homeless do whatever they want right on the street in front of my house. It's ridiculous. So yeah, they need to be taught manners to live like decent people. And uh, I'm not quite certain why it's my job to spend my tax money to uh, give to these people. Really, that's what I'd like to see in the strategic plan is the justification for spending the money because as near as I can tell, there's not a solution for homelessness. There's a problem, but there's really not a solution. And everybody wants to think there's a solution, but there doesn't seem to be. I mean, I'm looking at focus strategies. There's no, there's no solutions on that website. There's a lot of consultation and quantitative analysis, which I understand quite well, but there's no real solutions or proof of it going to work. So before you spend all the money, I would really like to see on the website, on the Santa Rosa City, what it is you think is gonna work and why you think it's gonna work, because what I've seen ain't working. Back in 2007, there wasn't much homeless here in Santa Rosa. And so whatever's happened since then, that's the problem. That's what needs to change. Um, the Creek, I agree with, I think that was Scott Stevenson. It's disgusting sometimes, it's very unsafe. Uh, it's not right that people who own this city and take care of it have to be, you know, 
terrorized like he was talking about by people. It, <clears throat> so it's very interesting when, uh, what is it, the Iron Man comes to town, that creek is clean as can be and you can't find a homeless person anywhere close. So it's possible, I've seen it happen every year. The police know what to do, everybody knows what to do, you know, uh, it's super weird that we think that we should homeless, I mean, we house homeless people in a place where it's 150% cost of living, where the entire middle of the United States is around 90, seems like that's a pretty straightforward financial point of view. You know, I come across maybe as not caring, but it's very realistic, like I said, that's it. Thank you, Vaughn. Next, I'm gonna have Kate 05. Kate 05, you're gonna to have to unmute. Sorry, Kate, we can't hear you. We're gonna go ahead and move on to Nelson Ramos. Oh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Um, I think the main service we actually have to offer is for people that are mentally ill and senior citizens. If you're able to work, you're young, they should get a job and they should pay. Giving handouts isn't the way, you're just making it easier. Um, encampments should be torn down and they should be a, a place to house them or an area to, for them to camp. I do agree with the previous person that said that they have an encampment in their house. I mean, I'm paying half a million dollars for a home. I'm paying $8,000 in taxes. And now to sit and put up with that, that's not fair. Um, for all of us that you know, follow the rules, we shouldn't be given the short end of the stick and make it easier for people that have substance abuse or are junkies. And obviously I know Sonoma is expensive to live in, but you know, we could offer services to lower the cost for housing. But again, I, I don't think this uh, giving freebies to able young people that just don't want to work is is the way the only freebies that should be handed out to are the people that are, have mental issues or again are owed and can't work i mean there's a uh, wineries here that mean they could bottle they could pick grapes they could if the wineries don't want them then you know create a job where they pick up trash along the city i mean keep them busy not just lounge around and you know just waste time um but again th those are the only two services that should be issued uh, if you're young you know give up affordable uh, you know uh, some kind of affordable housing for them thank you nelson next will be anita miglior hi thanks um, yeah, I, I wanted to say I agree with the, the last call, the last caller, um, same thing that, you know, we should have, I think the most ideal situation would be if we had caseworkers, um, you know, addressing people that are in the homeless camps and, and kind of, you know, constantly being on them about, you know, here's the resources that we have available. One caller was saying that there's no affordable housing. That's not true. I work with all kinds of um, property management, there's Burbank housing, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of low income housing here in Sonoma County, that has been my observation. Um, there might be a wait list because there's a lot of you know, demand for it, but there's not that the city's not offering that. I wanna make sure everyone's clear on that. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, I, but yeah, I'm just not a fan of um, that there should be this, or, because you've decided to not work that, or you get all these free resources. There are people that out aren't there that, you know, they're like, well, why should I work when I can get stuff for free? They, that's their, their mentality. They don't care about standards or being responsible. And I'm just a big fan of being responsible. I'm, I'm a single woman. I worked hard all my life and I've saved up to be able to afford a house. And so 
you know, I took that responsibility because I work hard and I just, it, 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 you know, it, it rubs me the wrong way to know that there's people that just, they don't care and they're, they're just out to take advantage of whatever, um, you know, the city's offering or take advantage of hardworking people by, you know, stealing their things or terrorizing the neighborhood and just, just being, you know, I, I just, I'm not a fan of rewarding bad behavior, <laughs> bottom line. So anything we could do that some kind of strategy that helps the people to be become more responsible, um, you know, get off drugs and just be a contributing member of society. I think that's the best plan. Thank you, Anita. Next will be Michael Titone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, so what I would like to see, I agree with um, everything Victoria said. I strongly believe that a lot of, because I've, I've been out to encampments quite a lot for the last five or so years, um, forming relationships with people, getting to understand their circumstances. And what I can say is there's a lot of trauma and there's a lot of compounding of issues that people have when they're, number one, they don't have any money. Number two, they have to rely on other people to take care of themselves because they have to have someone watch their stuff, for instance. So we need to get out of this fantasy mentality that these are just lazy people. Um, they're dealing with a lot. And if you were dealing with everything that th they're dealing with, you would not be having an easy life. So I would like to see an end to the criminalization of homelessness. I believe that it should not be required for anyone to accept services. There needs to be places for people to go where they're not going to be arrested and they're not going to be forced to, uh, for instance, abide by a curfew or deal with any sort of imprisonment-like conditions. Um, people need somewhere to be. And I think people fundamentally should have a right to just be and not have a, you don't have to have a house. That's a commodity. Why do we make people buy a commodity? That's, that's insane. Um, people should be allowed to exist without being arrested or being harassed for it. Um, I believe people do need help that we can get, but, and that's, that comes in through services. We need more places for people to go. Um, there's a lot of people experiencing uh, PTSD or who have issues being in crowded environments with a lot of other folks. And I think those people need more non-congregate shelter options. We need to take a look at how our motel system is managed and improve the conditions there. Um, we also, there also needs to be a lot more outreach to homeless people to get their opinions and their feedback because from what I'm seeing, it doesn't look like there's all that much outreach to actual encampments until people accept Sam Jones or they accept services. And if you want to help a group of people, you need to speak with them directly. So I'm gonna end with that, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next will be Carol Moylan. Hi, um, thank you so much for hosting this forum so that we can um, gather you know, everyone's feedback and opinions. A um, Couple points I wanna make. Um, I feel strongly that residential neighborhoods should not have to support the homeless in temporary sidewalk housing, RV parking, whatever it may be. Um, we're here because we put ourselves into an economic situation where we can live in a nice neighborhood, we pay our property taxes, we live by the rules, um, we don't um, create a blight on the city and I don't think we should accommodate people who um, don't have the resources or the um, capacity to live a certain lifestyle. I just don't think we, we need to take on that burden. Um, I also know that social media has also contributed to people coming up to Sonoma County, 
um, who are homeless um, because there is, um, you know, communication that we offer a lot of services up here. We are tolerant. Um, and so I think the more services we provide, probably the more people will come. Um, I know it's that case in San Francisco. Um, that's well known throughout the homeless community. It's, it's a great place to go because you can get everything you need there and nobody's going to bother you. So I don't know if Santa Rosa wants to be like that. Um, the other thing is I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, um, particularly videos that are produced by Mark Leita and his YouTube channel is called Soft White Underbelly. And he actually goes out to um, homeless encampments in the Los Angeles area and he interviews people. He has them come in and he does pay them for their interview, but he actually talks to people who are living on the streets. Now he's talking to addicts, you know, prostitutes, um, people who um, are mentally ill, uh, people who have been traumatized from childhood. Um, and his, his um, kind of summary is that a lot of these people were not going to be able to help because they were so traumatized when they were young that they have issues that they're really never going to get over, um, which is very, very sad. But I would recommend people going to that channel and watching those interviews. It's fascinating. It's, it's emotional. It's heartbreaking. But it's really what's going on. And um, I agree with the other person who spoke that said, we need to talk to the homeless. I mean, we're out here thinking, well, what do they need? Well, let's see, I don't know, let's do this, let's do that. Why don't we talk to the people who are experiencing homelessness? We need to really get out there and find out what's going on. Um, anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say, but uh, Hopefully we can get to some kind of resolution, but it needs to take a lot less time than five years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. We're gonna have three more speakers. It's gonna be Juanita, Cynthia, and then Rena. So Juanita, go ahead. Hi, um, I just wanted to say uh, we're, we were all out here because something bad in our life has happened. We didn't know how to handle it or speak. And um, the services out here don't promote themselves. And I didn't know any of this. If I didn't have friends that showed me any of the stuff that you guys have, all the programs, um, I wouldn't know anything. Um, <clears throat> and I ran Shamrock here, and um, I had 70 people there. We worked every day. There was work done every day in the camp. We volunteered to clean Roberts Road, from Roberts Road all the way up to Stony Point, the trail. We did our own dump runs. Um, so we're, we're by far, not, I mean, by far lazy. We have, we figure out every day where our next meal is going to come from. Um, when the weather's bad, all of us are looking for blankets, dry blankets at night, or you know. And um, I I think that because we're all we've all been out here for so long that it's kind of scary when you get services and they just throw you in a place. So I think that we need to have an encampment that has tents to RV, trailers to RVs, to little homes, and then, you know, let people work up through that. That way they're not just thrown in somewhere. It's, it, it's scary, it really is. Um, and the places that, like Sam Jones or um, other shelters, can't have visitors. 
when you just get off the streets with a camp of 70 or even 30, you're going to want someone around. I'm not saying bring a whole camp there or anything, but I mean, I don't think they should be so hard on them, keeping them out because of the visitors. Um, hey, oh, Juanita, I'm sorry to interrupt you, and I thank you for sharing your comments, but I need you to wrap it up just so we can um, have the other speakers get their, their time and share their input. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have Cynthia Toran. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I uh, appreciated actually Juanita's comments because I, I also agree that instead of asking us what everybody needs, we should be asking the homeless um, what they think they need. On the other hand, I think that there do need to be some standards of behavior, standards of living. And uh, I can relate to people going through traumas in life, but we all have probably had some and have to learn to deal with them. That's so if it takes, um, you know, mental health counseling and that sort of thing uh job training uh everywhere i look uh there's uh help wanted ads so you know it's not just job training it's you know in order to have we many of us learn these things having jobs in high school or whatever you have to show up on time you have to be clean you have to be respectful you have to realize that there's rules from your boss and that sort of thing uh we really need to do things to get people on their feet uh, and work. I do not believe that it's okay to just exist. Uh, I don't think that's a right of any of us. We have responsibilities um, as citizens of this country and uh, people need to be trained that those are responsibilities. Uh, and so I agree with many of the others that um, they're just uh, many of the others that I don't appreciate people who don't take some responsibility. Any place you walk around in my neighborhood, there's a lot of trash. That's, you know, there's trash barrels around. Why does the trash need to be left? Um, that is just one basic standard. So anyway, I think there needs to be some standards. I need, people need some um, help and training. And the other thing I don't really understand is we've been working on this for a long, long time. Can't we look at other cities that have had some uh, programs that have worked and uh, at least try them out. Um, I'm not actually sure what wraparound services mean, but uh, I do know that Catholic Charities and some of the other providers do try to provide uh, support for homeless, for people who are homeless. So I'm not sure what the disconnect there is, but... Yeah. Um, I just want to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to ask you to please wrap up your comments. Thank you. All right. Our last speaker today will be Rena Nicole. Unmute. Hold on. We can hear you. Oh, you can. Okay, good. Sorry. All right. So, um, okay. I can't do anything with my phone, but you can hear me, correct? We can hear you. So, um, uh, I've been observing this entire conversation and I think I maybe heard the comments of one person who is actually, or has actually been homeless. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm hearing. I'm also just hearing in the tone of the voices that I'm listening to that the majority of the people who have concerns or complaints are homeowners who are white. Um, 
So there is an element of privilege that those who have been making comments don't see past. So that's kind of a big part of what the problem is. My name is Rena Nicole. I'm 41 years old. I'm a person of color. My family has lived in Sonoma County since the 30s, maybe even longer. Um, and with the ancestral trauma that my family has suffered, being here in Sonoma County, you know, it's difficult. You know, you say, not you, but whoever was saying, oh, maybe they could go pick grapes or maybe they could whatever. It's like, you know, there are people who want to do those things and that's what they do for the living. The people who are homeless, like myself, are people who are just, or who have been lost. So a very brief explanation of how I ended up here. Um, I, if you look me up on Google, and you type in the Rena Nicole show, you will find me on YouTube. I had a television show that I was producing in the East Bay uh, on public television, KCMC. And I um, was doing really well. The episode that you will probably see is me interviewing Miguel Elliott, who is the founder of Living Earth Structures, who did an interview with me at Isis Oasis in Geyserville, California. You can watch the video to get more information about that. But that he is a resource for housing. I have a lot of ideas that, I, that I've actually been planning out. Um, just so you all know, as of today, I just received um, uh, a vote up for interview for the LEAP board. Uh, the LEAP board is, I have to write it down. Just don't know where I'm going to put the paper. Lived experience um, advisory panel. Uh, lived experiences advisory planning. Um, so I'll be having that interview shortly. Um, and I'm uh, applying for a chair position. So um, <laughs> the long and short of it, I was working with a producer who drugged me and raped me. I got pregnant from that rape. I was mortified. I went to Planned Parenthood and had an abortion. Uh, my husband works for Kaiser. So the way I found out I was pregnant was because he was complaining about the way I was smelling. Hey, Rena, I'm so, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but we, we do need to wrap up and I am happy to um, talk with you offline. I can provide you my email. I can provide you my direct line and I'm, I'm happy to talk further with you. I'm Happy to know that you're going to be part of LEAP. I know that Focus Strategies is working with that um, Committee of the Continuum of Care as part of our stakeholder engagement process. Sasha, I think that was our last um, speaker, right? That is correct. Okay, great. So we um, have just made it through our three questions and received your com comments, whether you raised your hand or posted those in the chat. And I just wanna thank everybody for coming and for participating. I wanna remind you that we have a survey uh, that's open until June 1st, and that's specifically related to the strategic plan and the questions that were raised this evening. So if you haven't already taken the survey, please do so. If you have questions, concerns, or comments outside of the scope of the strategic plan related to homelessness, direct those to homeless at srcity.org and Sasha or myself will follow up with you. Um, before we wrap up the meeting, I just wanted to check in with our focus strategies team and see if there's anything else you wanted to add. I don't think so, Kelly. Thank you so much for everyone who is participating and we, we will be in touch and working with the city on next steps with the plan and future opportunities to contribute. And I'll just add that uh, we will be sharing information with the community as the draft plan becomes available for, for public review. So stay tuned on that. And um, with that, I think we're gonna wrap up the meeting. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good evening.